بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ایز یو نو دیٹ ڈفرنٹ آرتھوگنیتک سرجیکل پروسیجرز آر یوز فار دا کریکشن آف مینڈیبولر پروگنیتزم ان دس ویڈیو وی ول ایکسپلین بائی لیٹر سرجیکل اسپلٹ آسٹیاٹومی ایز ڈسکرائب بائی ابوی جیزر دا ابوی جیزر آسٹیاٹومی ایز ا بائی لیٹر سرجیکل اسپلٹ آسٹیاٹومی آف دا ریمس It divides the mandible into two smaller condyle bearing segments. These are the two condyle bearing segments and a large segment consisting of a mandibular body including teeth and chin. Uh, this is a universal procedure that can be employed for all mandibular movements. To illustrate the procedure, we will here show the correction of mandibular prognathism. The obvious problem of this procedure is the close proximity of the osteotomy lines and the neurovascular canal. Care should be taken not to damage the inferior alveolar nerve during this procedure. Do a proper planning of orthognathic surgery. For this procedure, the transoral approach to the mandibular angle is used. Here is the marking of the incision. After exposure, the procedure starts with three catechotomies. Here you can th see this is the first cut. Uh, this one is the buckle. This is the second cut. And this one is the third cut. The first cut is made through the lingual cortex. Here you can see a few millimeter above the mandibular foramen. And it is parallel to the occlusion. So this cut is parallel to the occlusion. Here you can see this is the mandibular foramen. ID nerve is entering into it. And this cut is is about a few millimeter above this mandibular foramen. The corticotomy is extended from interior to the posterior border of the ramus. The second corticotomy is made through the buccal cortex. Here you can see. And this is also parallel to the occlusion but at the level of the alveolar crest. The corticotomy again is extended from interior to the posterior borders of the ramus. The third corticotomy is along the interior border of the ascending ramus. Connects the first two lines. First two line mean the first line that is above the mandibular foramen and second one is described in previous slide, that is the buccal cut. The final split is completed with a thin osteotome splitting the entire ascending ramus from the interior to the posterior border of the ramus. Here you can see uh, an osteotome that is uh, splitting the ramus uh, from the interior to the posterior border. A special bone spreader can be used to uh, mobilize the segments. Some movements such as superior positioning of the tooth bearing segment will require removal of bone to allow for good alignment of the respective segments. Mandibulo maxillary fixation is performed to position the tooth bearing segment to the desired relationship with the maxilla a prefabricated surgical splint or wafer may be used to facilitate this. Care must be taken to maintain the normal uh, fossa condyle relation and to avoid condylar displacement. Usually, this is achieved by manual positioning of the condyle bearing segment superiorly into the glenoid fossa. Internal fixation is usually performed with positioning screws, plates, or combinations. Screw placement is usually performed with either transpuckle instrumentation or angulated drills and screwdrivers. 
a minimum of two and preferably three bicartical position screws are placed between the buccal and lingual cartices. Care should be taken to avoid damaging the inferior alveolar nerve. Two possible patterns of screw placement are demonstrated here. A plate can be applied across the segment on lateral aspect of the mandible using monocortical screws. A minimum of two screws on each side of the osteotomy is necessary. Avoid placing the plate and screws close to the alveolar canal in order to avoid damage to the inferior alveolar nerve. Combination of a single plate and a position screw that is anti-rotation screw are also possible. This improves stability against rotational forces. After completion of osteosynthesis on both sides, the MMF is released and resulting occlusion is checked against the pre-planned position. The splint may be fixed to the maxillary teeth with a few thin wires and left in place during the healing phase to allow for neuromuscular adaption and position control.